Several weeks ago, I showed you the hexagon 1, a hexagonal equivalent of the square 1, with an unbandaged central layer to allow for more movement. You would think making a hexagon 2 would be pretty simple, just split the corners in half, and leave everything else the same. Unfortunately though, this hexagon 1 had a minor flaw. Due to the three vertical slices turning more easily than the top and bottom layers, sometimes it could be a bit difficult to initiate a turn on the top and bottom. The puzzle was still fully usable, it's just sometimes it was helpful to set it down on a table in order to flatten it. The issue was partially mitigated by the fact that you can't always make all of the vertical slice turns due to the corners being wider than the edges. On the hexagon 2 though, all turns would be available at all times. So I decided to design a 1x1x2 core for it, just like on the square 1 and square 2. This is technically a regression in terms of solving experience, but if I'm going to be honest, the central floppy hexagonal cheese was much easier to solve than I initially expected, so I don't think much will be lost on the hexagon 2. After I finished printing all the parts, assembling the hexagon 2 was much simpler than it was on the hexagon 1, because I was able to simply load half of the parts onto each side of the central layer, rather than having to assemble smaller chunks. After I had the two halves fully assembled, I screwed them together and then inserted the cap to hide the screw hole. Now it's time to sticker the hexagon 2 and then take it outside to see how it turns. The hexagon 2 turns really nicely. Having only one vertical slice as opposed to three turned out to make for a more solid feeling puzzle. And unlike the square 4 I printed years ago, the wedges are filleted enough that they never catch on each other in mid-turn. Obviously it's still not a speed cube so don't try corner cutting it or anything, but it's definitely a solidly turning puzzle. I'm kind of surprised that having so many pieces on the top and bottom 18 on each layer doesn't seem to negatively impact the turning. If you want a hexagon 2, or a hexagon 1, or even a floppy hexagonal cheese for yourself, all these puzzles are available from the link in the description. I was originally hesitant to make the hexagon 2 in the first place, because unlike the hexagon 1, I don't think it will have much of a unique solve. These cheese shape mods tend to have similar solutions, with the only difference being the amount of parts you have to put into place. It's fascinating to me how the square 1 and hexagon 1 have such dynamic solves compared to their square 2 and hexagon 2 counterparts. If you're purely looking for a cheese shape mod, I would personally suggest a square 2 because I think it has the perfect amount of parts. Not too few to the point where it's easy, and not too many to the point of being very tedious and repetitive. However, I acknowledge that the cheese shape mods have multiple different solving methods, and maybe you would have more fun by using a different method from the one I used. But before we can see what the hexagon 2 is like to solve, we first have to scramble it.
And here we are, ready to solve the hexagon 2. Unlike the hexagon 1, this is going to be my very first solve, and I don't think I'm going to need to come up with any custom algorithms for this puzzle. Let's go over why. This is a square 2, and both of these puzzles share the property that every single part on the top and bottom layers is of the exact same size. The only difference is this has more parts, meaning it's just divided into smaller degree increments. I also have this square 4, which also shares the same property. I kind of view the hexagon 2 as a spiritual successor to this square 4. They're going to solve basically the same, the only difference is this square 4 has 20 pieces at 18 degree increments, whereas this has 18 pieces at 20 degree increments, but it's like the two pieces that are missing on each side aren't really going to matter. This puzzle turns pretty badly and to the point where I can't really just pick it up and do a casual solve, and overall this is a much better puzzle. But anyway, why do I think this is not going to be very difficult to solve? Well, let me show you an algorithm that I got from Japsher Foyce's uh, puzzling page. He has it in some weird uh, letter notation. I've converted it to standard square one notation, just so that it's less confusing for you. And what you can see is that algorithm swapped these two parts and these two parts. All of these puzzles solve exactly the same. You solve one layer intuitively or with algorithms to help speed along the process. And then you solve the second layer just by keeping one set of pieces on the bottom layer and then continually swapping parts on the top layer, kind of like a bubble sort if you know what that is. I have tested this algorithm on the square equal and it does work. I don't know if it works on the puzzle with just three slices because I don't know where to find that in the puzzle simulator, but I'm sure it works. It doesn't work on a two by two, so at the very least that might be the lower limit. But in any case, this algorithm is honestly all you really need. Like just solve one layer intuitively and solve the other layer with this single algorithm. That's why I was initially hesitant to make the hexagon 2 because it's not really going to be anything new to solve. It's just going to be this but with extra steps. But after remembering how much of a disappointment the square 4 was, I thought, you know what, let's give a puzzle with a large amount of wedges a chance again, you know? So the first thing I'm going to do right now is try and solve, I guess, let's do the white layer for fun. I'm going to solve it probably intuitively, maybe using some algorithms. I really have no strategy for this part. Let's do it. I will say that I'm sure there are many different methods of solving the top or first layer of this type of puzzle. I chose probably the simplest and most methodical method, but I'm sure there's other creative ways you can use. Obviously, the square 2 has a lot less thought put into its solve than the square 1 does, so there's no treasure trove of information to go to to figure out different algorithms and such. The only real resource I had was Jap's puzzle page. And even that I only looked at for the last layer algorithm. I didn't actually read about how he solves the first layer. Alright, so at this point, you can see that I've solved the entire top layer aside from these four parts. And basically what I did is literally just basic block building, except one quirk was after I built a block that exceeded half of the layer, I actually kept part of it on the other layer in order to preserve it, because otherwise it would have been very difficult to pair things up. So now I think I'm going to have to get a bit more creative in terms of putting these four parts in, but I'll see. Hopefully it's not that bad.
I feel like normally when I solve puzzles, this is when I would reach the limit of what I can do intuitively, and I would have to either look up an algorithm or figure something out myself. But with this specific puzzle, I guess geometrically it just works out because I ended up actually being able to solve the entire top layer intuitively. I might have messed up a little bit. Uh, you can see that here I have just over half, and here I have just under half of all of the white parts. I think I just spent all of that time bringing this orange edge to the actual wrong side of the cube. Okay, so you can see what I did previously is I literally just kept moving it one piece down at a time. Although that way, but now I'm just going to have to move it all the way back. But honestly, I'm having fun. Like, I've never solved this hexagon 2 before, and I've barely even solved my square 2. So genuinely, this is a learning experience for me. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you're enjoying watching me learn about this cube as well. Alright, and finally, as I make this last move, I believe now, each layer has exactly half of the white side. So what I should be able to just do is... Actually, first, let me figure out which way the white side is. The white side is... with the, the cut on the left. So actually, this is going to be the white side. So let us just do that. And there we are. All we have to do is... Real quick, bit of trickery. And now we can compare the white side to the central layer as well. First two layers complete. Genuinely, that was quite a lot of fun. I was kind of going out on a limb there with my strategy of moving the piece one spot at a time. But you know what? I'm kind of surprised, but it actually worked out. So I guess that's just how you solve the first layer of one of these puzzles. And now obviously the last layer is going to be me just bubble sorting all of these parts by swapping one at a time, very slowly. And so I have successfully paired all of the oranges. That took a couple algorithms. This is going to take quite a lot of repetitions of the exact same algorithm. But the benefit of the middle layer being solved is I can always just look at it to check what part I actually need next. So now I can see I need cyan here. It's kind of impressive to me how, despite mechanically being nearly identical, the hexagon 1 and hexagon 2 have completely different solves with basically nothing in common. The one exception being there's that one algorithm that's useful where you swap two parts on the top layer and two parts on the bottom layer across from each other because that's useful on both cubes. I guess it's kind of a similarity to the actual square one and square two. Although I feel with a square two, you might also be inclined to just pair up the corners and then solve it like a square one. Although that's probably a bit slower than just bubble sorting all of the edges and corners like I do here. Okay, so at this point I think I've solved a pretty good chunk of the puzzle. You can see I have all of the greens, all of the oranges, all of the cyans, and all of the blues. So that means that all that's left is just this chunk here of the reds and purples. Honestly, doing the first four took quite a long time, but what I did to save time is, you might have noticed I actually used the across edge swap algorithm twice because the cyan and green edges were just on the complete opposite sides and this was a much quicker way of getting them into the correct spots rather than working them all the way around and then back around. So that was a good little time save, although a bit stressful because 
Uh, this algorithm is a bit hard to keep track of on this hexagon too. This isn't a square one where everything's kind of like just going to fall into place. But anyway, we're in the home stretch. It is time to get done the purples and reds. Okay, and now we have just the result of a single algorithm, so rather than speeding this part up, uh, I'll let you watch it in real time, so you can see my final moves of the Hexagon 2. And here we are. The Hexagon 2 is finally solved. I initially was hesitant to make this puzzle because unlike the Hexagon 1, which is a unique and very interesting solve and I actually had quite a lot of fun devising a new method for it, un unlike that, this is just an exercise of intuitiveness for the first layer and tedium for the second layer. I did have quite a bit of fun and I was surprised by the fact that my intuitive strategy for the first layer actually ended up working. But then, oh my god, the second layer was just the same algorithm repeated a thousand times. This is definitely simultaneously easier, more tedious, and not as fun as the Hexagon 1. If you were to choose one of these, and you're willing to deal with the fact that this is a little bit squishy, definitely go for the Hexagon 1. It's a much more satisfying solve. But I will say that these two do look pretty nice um, together and I know there are people who are fine with tedious puzzles that's why anyone ever bought the item star so if you think this puzzle is for you by all means it's available have fun but that's all I have to say about the hexagon 2 thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all next time